Y'all don't use this thing loosely here. I have heard some small business owners doing COVID that just freaked out and just, oh, I'm gonna give them a severance and they gonna work for 30 days. Like, no, 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 baby. A severance is cutting ties as of this day. That person's not doing anything for you after that day, okay? I would say stay away from that. Now we get to the fun part. The fun, the part where y'all like, to me, you ready to tell me all that HR stuff, but all I wanna know is how to actually fire the ass. Hey y'all, this is Tamika, the face behind Hey HR, and I am here to tell you all about how to fire, terminate, get rid of employees that you have now brought onto your team. And so you guys know that this is part four of my entrepreneur and small business owner series. And so all of the things that I'm gonna give you is particularly aimed at smaller organizations. Now, mind you, these are a lot of things that I've seen in larger organizations. And a lot of this is foundational so that as you grow, you've already built a foundation to having a smooth termination process and one that's less painful as time goes on. Many people may say, well, Tamika, does firing somebody seem that easy? Well, when you're running a business and you're looking at meeting goals and you're looking at accomplishing your organization's mission, over time, it does become a little bit easier for the actual process. I can tell you that in my entire career, termination has never been my favorite thing. Never has been. I try everything that I can to save that relationship before I terminate it. Now, I've had some terminations that have been really, really rough. And so I told you guys all about it in a previous video and I'll try to link it here. And overall, it's just, it totally depends on the situation. It depends on the person. It depends on the organization. There's just so many factors of how terminations can go. But when you're a small business owner, a lot of times I have just seen so many hiccups that I'm like, what are they doing? I've had people that are employees of small businesses call me and say different things that happen and I'm like what are they doing I've had small businesses that say well I did such and such like just don't be proud of some things because most times with terminations just like it is what hires is an opportunity to learn to get better to groom your organization better to groom your employees better to look at what areas could be improved I am going to give you some tips on how to make this a smooth process process for you. So if you're a small business owner or entrepreneur and you want to know like the best ways to get rid of someone, to terminate them, to separate them, to fire them, then you definitely want to keep on watching. So the very first thing that you want to do is make sure that you're always documenting everything appropriately. You know, you want to document the good and the bad. You definitely want to document when the relationship is not working out, when performance is lacking, when things are happening, because documentation can help you in so many areas. So the first area that documentation can help you, where a lot of small business owners inquire about it, is unemployment. Um, a lot of times people will say, well, oh, Tamika, you know, if I just tell them this, I tell them that. Well, unemployment wants to see evidence of whatever you're saying. You have a hard time to say that what you did was absolutely correct if you don't have evidence for it. It's almost like a regular court. And another thing is you never know what information that employee is going to bring or that ex-employee or what have you. So you always want to make sure that you have it fully documented so that you're not the person that's taking the lower end of the stick when it comes to unemployment processes. One way to start that documentation is to include in your process a performance management program or a performance management process or a review process or what have you at minimum once per year. There are some people that will say, well, we do a performance review every three months. It's just not necessary. The only times I think you should ever have to worry about doing regular performance reviews is if your business is constantly changing, like where the needs of the employee is changing, the workload is aggr aggressive, the leadership style changes, the schedule changes. I, I'm never in favor. There's some people that may have a good argument for it, but I'm never in favor of doing employee performance reviews every three months. To me, that's a complete waste of time. You lose the employees, they get aggravated with the, your managers feel like it's a waste of time as well. There are some people that say, well, I don't want to wait a whole year. Well, it's okay to do it every six months. But my biggest suggestion to anyone who is trying to figure out how should we do employee performance reviews is to always make sure that you do it repetitively when an employee first starts. So you're, you're thinking that from all of those candidates, you've hired the cream of the crop, the best person. So you definitely want to do a follow up in 30 days. And then I would get them prepared for actual performance review in six months. After you already did that, that 
30 day review. Maybe you want to do a 90 day review. That's not a problem at all. I would say in that 30 days is a time to kind of catch on everything from the beginning. They may have a lot of brand new employee concerns and there are a lot of like foundational things that you want to make sure that they're aware of. Maybe how to submit their time, um, maybe how to do certain documentation, maybe how to get certain accesses. By 90 days, most times employees are comfortable. And so their questions or their concerns have graduated and so should yours. By six months, you're definitely making sure that things are continuing to go well. And so it's a good time to do a formal review and to truly judge them per se on their performance. By a year, you definitely should have one in place and I would continue it every year after that. Most times hiring managers wanna give a good review during employee performance reviews and it's honestly just not necessary. What I highly suggest that you do is be as transparent as you can during that time. So during that time, I would make sure that if there are any issues that you see coming in the forefront, document it there. Most times when you go to an unemployment hearing and you can say, well, I told them about this in their employee performance review, then that's not really a write-up. It's feedback. Employees receive it better and it still works the same as if you literally wrote them up. And most times when they first starting at an organization, you're going to put a bad taste and not only that employee's mouth, your culture by doing an early write-up. So the best thing to do is address it during a performance review because you're going to give the good and the bad at that time. You're expecting it to be a casual conversation. You're expecting to get feedback from this employee as well. So that would definitely support you if it turns into a situation where you need to terminate someone. Another good time that you definitely want to document is during elevated write-up. So maybe you've already addressed this issue verbally and you haven't really seen the response that you're looking for. But I would suggest that now that we've already addressed it verbally, I want us to sit down and do a formal write-up. And so I would do that in a, a separate form, definitely not your performance review form. You should have a write-up form where you kind of write out the issues that you are experiencing, kind of write out the results that you are looking for and give a time frame on when you expect those results to be clear. But also you that time to see if that employee has any personal issues that they may need additional leniency on. I had an employee that came to me one time and she was performing well, but a lot of employees were, were saying that she was disgruntled in her communication. And it was difficult to hear her say that her teenager was doing self mutilization because her teenager was upset that her mom took her dad back after he cheated on her mom. So, Hey, I can see why you're a little bit frustrated. How can we help you? You know, we gave her some time off. We connected her with a counselor. We allowed her to extend her PTO. Those are some of the things that you can do because whenever you get to a point of term, Termination, if it gets into the hands of an employment law attorney or an employment court, then the U.S. is always in favor of what was best for the employee. And so you want to make sure that you're saying, hey, listen, I did everything that I could to correct this issue. They told me about these personal issues and I assisted them in this way. And I gave a little bit more time on when I can expect them to perform better in their job duties. I may have given them some assistance by additional employees, took them some tasks away. Those are some of the things you want to do so that you can look Look like, hey, I've, I've really tried to make this work. Now, the last documentation that you want to do is actually your termination paperwork. And so many people may say, well, to me, what do I include in the termination paperwork? I always say to make sure that you do a formal termination letter, one that outlines the issue at hand, one that outlines the things that you've done over time, and one that reaffirms or confirms to the employee that they're terminated. And I would normally list in resources. So if they have benefits, I would say who they should contact about that. Because we all know that in a traditional situation, you would contact HR. Well, you want to sever those ties with that employee. And so you give every bit of resource they need. If it's a 401k buyout or or transfer or rollover. You want to make sure that you're providing all of that information in the termination letter. And you want to make sure that you have that simply documented so that if unemployment should come up, then you've made it clear to this employee that you guys are no longer continuing this relationship. Now, a lot of people get concerned because they'll say, well, I gave her the letter and I asked her or him to sign off on it and they didn't sign off on it. That's absolutely okay. You can just put in the area where you expected them to sign, employee refused to sign. Some people don't ask for a signature. That's the most uncomfortable time to get one. Sometimes it's easy to get one. It's not necessary to have one. At the end of the day, it doesn't change your decision. You're letting that person go. <laughs> So now the next thing that you want to do as you prepare for a termination or you see one coming in the horizons is that you want to make sure that you plan ahead. That documentation is part of your planning ahead because you've already did those forms. You've already had these conversations. You've already did this elevated write-up option. Planning ahead should be 
If this person goes to there tomorrow, who will replace their duties? So you want to do some succession planning. You want to make sure that you're doing it very discreet. Because if that employee realizes that you're planning for their exit, that can make things a little hostile. Whenever you're doing that planning for their exit, make sure that you make it inclusive. Don't just do planning for just that position. I would always try to plan for all positions. Look like you just want to do some cross training so that everyone's getting cross trained. A lot of times you can find other areas that, that needed help or you can see other areas that are doing really well. Another thing is that you want to include that person into the succession plan. Have them do this cross training with someone else so that you can pull out that information of whatever they've done, especially if there's a, they're an employee that's worked with you for like a long time, 5, 10, 15, 20 years. They have so much institutional knowledge and they've created so many processes for themselves that you want to kind of pull that information out of them. Another thing that you want to do is start recruiting for that position. When As you're recruiting, as you're interviewing, don't focus only on that person's faults. I've noticed that a lot, particularly with small business owners, is as we interview, we ask questions, particularly about the very last person that left a salty taste in our mouth. So if that person left for a reason of traveling, then you're honing in on, well, where do you live? How do you feel about travel? Focus on the entire job, because one thing you don't want to do is get someone that can fix the areas of the person that's leaving, but not fix that total position and pick that position up and continue going successfully. And so you definitely want to make sure that as you're recruiting, you're targeting your questions as everything as a whole. You probably want to see how good their skills are because they just may walk into a situation that isn't easy for them because who knows, this may be a, a, an employee that gets upset and deletes everything. And now this person has to create everything all over again. So you want to make sure that this new person is really good with their job and that they can totally do this position well, independently. The next thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you're planning ahead by informing those people that need to know. And so you may say, well, Tamika, should I tell the whole organization? No, but I definitely would tell IT so that IT knows exactly when to cut off that person's access to emails, drives, software, hardware, what have you. So I would inform IT ahead of time that this may be something that's on the horizon. You may get an urgent call from me where you need to do this because sometimes they need to know ahead of time to be able to get all of the accesses taken away. I also would let finance know because a lot of times there's some issues where they're like, well, instead of us processing this out like now, which would cause a delay in the pay, then I'll just give it to them in their last paycheck. So I would always inform finance as well. Another thing is maybe you have some folks that you report to that should know as well. And they could have a different resolution on what they suggest and kind of change the course of action. So I would definitely inform them too. Another person that you can inform is your security. If you have security at the building and they make sure that everyone has accesses in and out, then I would definitely kind of pull them into the loop as well. If you have folks that operate or manage your fleet cards or fleet vehicles or what have you, or your credit cards, then I would make them aware too. Um, in some cases with those things, you can let IT or finance finance know and they can take care of those additional things. If you have a super small organization, there's only one person that manages those things, then you want to tell them. But you want to make sure that these people that you're telling are completely aware that this is discrete information, it's confidential, it cannot be shared. Now, I will tell you guys that a new thing that I recently realized, particularly during the pandemic, is that small business owners and entrepreneurs, when they're letting folks go, they go for this term that they've heard of over and over again, but obviously they don't know what the heck it means. Severance agreements. Severance agreements means particularly that you're severing ties. You're saying that on this day, I no longer will have interactions with you. I expect you to not have interactions with me. It's not a situation where you can say, well, hey, I'm with this severance agreement. I'm going to pay you for the next 30 days while you train this person. That's not a severance agreement. A severance agreement is saying on this day, you're no longer a part of the organization. Another thing that the severance agreement is doing is making sure that this person cannot have litigation against you. You're protecting yourself. So there's a separate document, a severance agreement actually, that is called, that you would use to document what you're paying out, what their last day is, and what laws they cannot sue you on. And you want to encompass 
us all. Y'all, it's so, so, so recommended that if you're going to use a severance agreement, please contact an employment law attorney. It's just so, so important because a lot of times when you do severance agreements, there's also ADA protections where if an employee is over 40 years old, you have to give them a certain amount of time to reply. The same thing with severance agreements. You have to include how long you're allowing them to sign off on this agreement and what happens if they don't sign off on this agreement. Y'all don't use this thing loosely here. I have heard some small business owners doing COVID that just freaked out and just, oh, I'm gonna give them a severance and they're gonna work for 30 days. Like, no, 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 baby. A severance is cutting ties as of this day that person's not doing anything for you after that day okay so please i would say stay away from that because most times severance agreements always includes you paying out a comfortable lump sum of money at that moment their last day their last paycheck you're paying it then not over a course of time you're paying you say i'm gonna pay you 10 15 20 30 40 i have hundreds of thousands of dollars paid out because at this day you're no longer a part of our organization these are the reasons you're not. This is what we're paying out to you. I need you to sign off on this by this date so that I can process your payment so you can get this lump sum of a payment and you're not gonna sue us for this. A long list of different reasons or laws that they really could sue you for. Most people use a severance agreement if they see that there's a high potential that this employee can sue them. If you don't feel like that's the case, don't use it. <laughs> Now we get to the fun part. The fun, the part where y'all like, Tamika, you ready to tell me all that HR stuff, but all I want to know is how to actually fight ass. Okay, I'm going to tell you how to do the actual termination. We're going to call it, let's, you know, term day, resignation day, separation day, fire day, you know, what have you, whatever name y'all want to call it. Doomsday, tea day, whatever. The actual day that you're doing this termination. So the first thing that you want to have is your termination letter. I highly suggest having a termination checklist. This checklist is for you, not this person. It's to make sure that you've done everything you need to do ahead of time, everything that you've done during that time, and everything that you need to do after that time. Guys, most terminations don't stop the day that that person walks out of the door. You still have to process payroll. A lot of times things can happen with retirement that comes to you way later. You still have W-4, W-2 forms, um, or tax forms, I'll say that you still need to do is so much that happens over that time. Sometimes you can get audited and something happens during this person's employment and you still have to like dig into this file. Sometimes you may have a lawsuit that pops up or had popped up while this person was there and there's still things you need to do with this employee. Most terminations, I ain't gonna say not every, most terminations do not end the day that that employee and a checklist is so important. So if you guys are like, Tamika, what the heck do I include in this checklist? Then listen, I got a link down below. You just hit that link. I will send this checklist to you absolutely free. So that all you have to do is say, check, check, check. If you want, you can put your little logo into that, that checklist. It's all yours. Feel free to do whatever it is that you want with this checklist. Add to this checklist, delete from this checklist, whatever it is that you wanna do with this checklist. But at the end of the day, I need you to make sure that you're prepared. We, we get scatterbrained on term days. I will tell you, it's been times where I've terminated a, a long expecting employee or something that happened literally that day and I'm like, you got to go. And I need to make sure that I did everything I need to do because you're not protecting just yourself or that person, you're protecting your company. So it's important to make sure that you stay in line with everything that you need to do. So I'm here, I'm your HR Connect. Join my email list, you will get that termination checklist. So some definite things that I always suggest Whenever you're terminating someone, is choose a day with less traffic. If you have, you know, an option to say, okay, we close early on Fridays at noon, then let that person go on Friday at one o'clock. Tell them you need them to stay around for an hour because you have a meeting with them and let them go when there's just less traffic in the workplace. Another thing is you want to make sure that you're doing it on a day when you're not expecting big outputs from them. Maybe you're expecting them to do this big presentation that only they prepared. Don't do it before that day. Do it after that day. Make sure that you look at the schedule to find the best day to do this. A lot of people will say that I terminate folks on Friday so that they can calm down through the weekends and then we can have an easy Monday. And a lot of folks will say I avoid Mondays because I give them all week to come in and just harass us or, or scare us or what have you. You know, we in the times of, of trying to figure out what we're doing with these guns. People can come out with guns. It's just unsafe. So I, I do suggest doing them on Fridays if you can. 
But make sure that with that termination letter, whenever you're termina terminating them on that date, make sure to include the reason. Sometimes people have done so many wrongs and done so many things that they should not be doing that they don't even know why they're getting fired. So you, you literally have to like remind them. And maybe there's a list that you need to give them. And you want to make sure that you include that. I would do that in conversation, but also do that in the termination letter. Now, I've told you guys this already, and I'll tell you again that in that termination letter or attached to it, I would definitely give them all contacts, whatever benefits that they may need to get or to use or what have you. HSA, your health, your dental, your vision, your 401k, your, your IRA, whatever. I would give them all of that contact information, your vendor's information, so that they can contact them directly. Now, if you can't get all of the documents signed, again, that's okay, but I would try to aim for getting all those documents signed. If I can't, the biggest thing you want to do is make sure that you get all of your equipment back. So a lot of people now are allowing folks to do hybrid work or work from home or whatever. You want to get that laptop back. You want to get those keyboards, those headphones, those access cards, those keys, those fobs, whatever you have given them, get all of those things back. Again, that's something you want to have in your checklist and I have it for you. So just hit the email link so that you guys can remember this stuff because it's super important. You just don't want to waste time, keep buying stuff over again, or that they may have, maybe IT couldn't get something, you know, stopped. And so now they can get access to it. And so get that equipment back. And lastly, I don't think a lot of people think about this. And then when we do think about it, we think about it in the wrong way, but you want to inform your staff. I would say send a company-wide email and it can be very, very, very basic. Do not include any reasons why or anything like that. You just want to put the employee's name, the last date that they're working and let everyone know that this person is no longer a part of the company. They're no longer allowed accesses that comes with employee privileges or what have you and stop. Like, please make it simple. Most human resources information systems have an automated template that you can just literally check a box and it goes out to all employees. And it's very, very simple. That's the best thing to do. The only people that need to know the details are the people that need to know the details. Don't put that in a company-wide email. So guys, I am telling you that this entrepreneur series is intended to totally help you guys. And I'm hoping that I am just providing what you're looking for. So if you guys know that there just may be a time that you have to let someone go, or maybe this, this video made you realize like, oh my God, to me, I didn't do those things. And I know exactly what you're talking about because I ran into this problem or that problem. Then all you have to do is get my termination checklist. Make sure to go into the description box Tap on that link, join my email list so that you can get your checklist and have an easy termination. If you guys are new here, welcome. If you guys are returning, hey girl, hey, I appreciate you coming back. If you know someone that can use this video, use this information, please share it with them. At minimum, please make sure that you hit the like button so that YouTube knows that you guys are enjoying it. I thank you so much for being here. And as usual, I can't wait to see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.